Applying math and science in your welding endeavors helps in understanding and solving welding problems. When MIG was invented, it was found essential to have non-turbulent flow to get quality welds. We'll learn in part two how well choke flow works to maintain preset gas flow and the problems caused by low pressure devices designed to reduce gas surge. We'll see how an orifice mounted at the wire feeder to control flow lacks sufficient start gas and causes poor weld starts. A simple device will be discussed which eliminates starting surge while delivering sufficient gas to purge air from the weld start area and that maintains preset flow. We'll see why gas leaking out of a hose or fitting lets air leak back in. High flow rates cause air to be pulled into the gas stream which creates inferior welds. The Welding Institute in Cambridge, England showed that with a typical 5 8 inch diameter nozzle, 48 cubic feet per hour was sufficient to cause turbulent flow versus the desired smooth laminar flow. Just what causes the excess gas to be stored in the gas delivery hose when welding stops? How does the pressure reach a high level in the gas hose when it is only 3 to 8 psi when welding? If a needle valve is used to control flow, when gas is flowing the pressure drops across the small passage and the velocity reaches the speed of sound. In this example the pressure drops from 80 to 4 psi. When welding stops the gas continues to flow into the gas hose and quickly reaches the regulator or pipeline pressure. The same relationship exists if an orifice is used to control flow. In part one we learned engineers use the principle called choke flow that relies on gas flowing through an orifice to be limited in velocity to the speed of sound. To see how well preset flow is maintained with choke flow and to compare it with a low pressure device sold to reduce start gas surge, the following tests were conducted. In a typical MIG system restrictions were added and removed to simulate spatter buildup and bends in the MIG gun cable. Flow was measured at the gun nozzle using a portable flow meter. Flow was set at 31 CFH as shown in green. With the standard 25 PSI regulator flow meter, the flow remained at the preset level through the full range of restrictions tested without touching the needle valve flow control. With the low pressure surge guard device, the flow was initially set at the same 31 CFH. However, as restriction changes occurred, the flow varied from a low of 16 to a high of 37 CFH, a wide unacceptable range. Of note, the flow calibrated pressure gauge read a constant 31 CFH for all tests, giving a false flow reading. It is no wonder these devices frustrate welders. What causes flow restrictions when welding? When spatter builds in the nozzle and when small gas passes in the gas diffuser clog with spatter, increased flow restrictions exist. Also the small gas passages in the gun and gun cable, which often doubles as the wire conduit, become partially clogged with copper flakes and wire drawing lubricant. There have been and still are several low pressure devices sold that reduce gas surge, but they create bigger problems by defeating automatic flow compensation that the engineers use in quality flow control designs and have since the invention of MIG welding. Even Bernoulli born in 1700 would understand why low pressure is a bad approach. Another approach attempted to reduce start gas surge problems is to control flow at the feeder. A common device tried is a simple orifice flow control mounted at the feeder inlet. These devices are often rightfully rejected by welders who may drill them out or remove them as they say to get more gas. Although it may not be well understood, the main reason for their poor performance is not the lack of steady state gas flow, it's the amount of gas available to purge the weld start area. In a 1982 patent, Stauffer found extra gas was needed at the weld start to purge the weld area 
and gun nozzle of air. He built a reservoir to store and deliver this extra gas at the start, as shown in his patent. The experience of a bar joist fabricator shows the problems with mounting a flow control orifice at the feeder. Although their system was delivering 45 to 50 CFH, welders wanted higher gas flow rates. Testing our gas saver system, the orifice was moved to the gas supply end of the special gas delivery hose, providing a controlled amount of extra start gas at a maximum flow rate that avoids excess turbulence. The welder using the test system instantly saw the weld start improvement. During the tests, steady state flow was even reduced to 35 CFH with the same improved starts. A year after installing the gas saver system on all 50 MIG welders, their bulk gas supplier called to see why the gas use had reduced over 30 percent. Production had not changed. The simple patented gas saver system consists of a special custom extruded large OD small ID hose with 80 percent less volume than conventional hoses. A special feeding at the feeder welder end limits peak flow at the start to a rate that does not produce excess turbulence. Can it flow gas in long hoses? Yes, easily 50 feet, or in some cases even longer. In fact, TIG systems have used this same hose ID for 50 feet and longer lengths since the 1950s. Welders appreciate its benefits in starting. How much gas is wasted at the weld start? These two examples provide answers. A truck box manufacturer welded 236 parts with a full cylinder of gas. Just replacing the gas delivery hose with our gas saver system, keeping all other variables the same, with one cylinder of gas they welded 632 parts. 63% gas savings. An exhaust system manufacturer tested six foot gas saver systems on their various weldments and found savings ranging from 25 to 40 percent. They installed systems on all their 126 robot welders. Gas leaks cause more than gas waste. John Dalton in the 1700s defined that gas pressure is the sum of the partial pressure of each gas present. As an example, since there's no nitrogen in our shielding gas hose, or there shouldn't be, the nitrogen pressure is zero. If we have a leak in the hose, the nitrogen pressure outside the hose is 14.7 times 78% nitrogen. Therefore, there is a pressure differential of 11.5 psi driving nitrogen back through the hole where the shielding gas is leaking out. As Dalton pointed out, the distance between gas molecules is very large. Therefore, the gas molecule leaking out wouldn't even see the nitrogen molecule and oxygen and water vapor for that matter, coming back through the same hole. In summary, high pressure allows choke flow gas control that maintains preset flow for normal changes in flow restrictions. Low pressure devices do not maintain preset flow over the range of flow restrictions that occur in production, causing weld problems. Orifices mounted at the feeder do not provide sufficient extra gas to purge the weld start area and gun nozzle of air. This often frustrates welders who drill them out and attempt to compensate with higher steady state flow, often wasting even more gas. A simple patented gas saver system reduces gas waste by 80%, provides purge gas to clear air from the weld start zone, and maintains preset gas flow. When gas leaks out of a hose or gas fitting, moisture-laden air goes back into the same hole. For more information about shielding gas control and our patented gas saver system, see part one of this series and visit netwelding.com. Thank you.